Take me into what you actually experienced at the start of Iraqi Operation Iraqi Freedom. So my situation was a little bit unique. I was the wing commander for an air refueling wing in Wichita, Kansas, 22nd Air Refueling Wing. And uh, I took command in 2002, so obviously it was after 911. And 911 struck us in so many ways, and I was so privileged a couple of days ago to get to go and see um, the pools, the commemorative pools, and the, and the new building, and the way it's presented, and the history of it. I was at, near St. Louis, uh, Missouri, in an Air Force base, Sky Air Force Base, Illinois, and I had been—I was the commander of a, of a different group before that wing command, and it had C-17s and C-5s and C-141s and KC-135s in my command, and so we immediately I watched the board in the tanker airlift uh, control center and that uh, base, which shows everything in the sky, you see all the transponders from all the airliners and all the military flights um, in the world. It's, it's kind of like the movie Armageddon, but better and real. But, but it was a, an amazing day because what was stunning to us, airmen, was watching the lights go out as it made all the planes land. Remember how quiet the skies were? And so I saw, you know, we saw the planes go into the buildings, which is horrible, and, uh, and then we saw uh, the lights going out, and there was one stray light coming in um, toward Washington State, and the airliner had the wrong transponder code in, and so we didn't know if it was another one. And I remember how that felt when they finally cleared that up. So that's the backdrop to it, and of course we all went into action. I told some of you before, it's very eerie to actually have to defend your nation inside your own border. So I was up in a tanker over Houston refueling um, some fighters, and it was very somber because we try to defend you away from here so that the bad guys can't get here and then they, they got bias on that one and, and that was just really hard to feel. So uh, about a year later I wound up at the commander of this wing. Now coincidentally I had twins about two months before OIF started, no, actually yeah, two months before. And so I had the twins, they were fine, I was fine, I went back to work and we launched to OIF. So that's a little different I think for people, no, not everybody does that. But, um, um, but what helped in my wing was they realized I have a family too. So when I had to deploy family members, they knew that I understood what that felt like. And that's a big deal. When you launch people, they don't really know what's happening. So we launched a lot of tankers uh, to Southwest Asia and with some main bases where they go. But um, if I can use language that's slightly blue, not too bad, but I think just to, it's real. Um, the saying in tankers, every feeling tankers, is no one kicks ass without tanker gas. <laughs> so when we get all high and mighty about what platform you fly, your bomber, your fighter, that's really nice, but you're not going to be able to get there unless we're there with you, so pardon me, but that's what we thought. And uh, so that's what my folks did, but they still went off not really knowing when they were going to come back, what was really happening, how it was going to go. And so when we, we would start rotating back, and, and we sent them out in in different groups across the world, because it's a strategic airlift, and that's the power of our country, by the way. Uh, no other country can get things places. It's, it's big logistics. It's air refueling tankers so that a B-2 can take off from Missouri, fly to Afghanistan, and back to Missouri in one flight with about 25 air refuelings, because we can do that. And other countries don't have that reach. So that's airlift and air refueling may not sound like you're pulling the trigger, but that's why we can get there, uh, because the laws of physics still apply. And um, so it's a big deal, but we had to explain to families what was happening and realize that's a big deal about service to our country is it's not just a bunch of um, lone people going out to perform, it's, it's human beings with families who have to be taken care of too. So it may not come across all the time because we're dressed this way, um, but we're a lot of people with a lot of hearts and souls and dreams and hopes and we have to take care of them all the way through. So as people started rotating back, we made a really big deal out about it. We brought the fire trucks out and you spray the water over the planes as they come in and we have the band and the honor guard and the folks come off the plane and their families run up and hug them. And it happens routinely because we send our folks into harm's way not really knowing what's going to happen and then and hope we can get them back. So we, we did in the main, um, but you know over the last two decades it's been a really uh, a lot of arduous work for military families, so for all the services, and that was our part in it.